and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And my guest today is a man who's sold a lot of records. As many as 100 million have his stamp on them, either as a producer, a writer or a studio mus musician. Now, half of those were recorded by his phenomenally successful Enigma project, which has uh, played an outstanding and influential role in bringing together different genres of music like uh, New Age and electronic music, as well as ambience and trance. And the man who created Enigma, here he is, Michel Cretu. Hello. Thank you very much for joining us today on Talking Germany. Michel Cretu, New Age, Ambience, Electronic Music. That was my try to sort of define your music. What's your description of what you do? No, I think you described it pretty well. It's a mixture of all of it. Maybe with some more ingredients, a little bit mysterious, spiritual, and um, yeah, I, I try always concerning Enigma. I try to combine tradition of many continents over many centuries and to mix it together in a way so that you think, oh, it just was done yesterday, like this. Yes, and it has to sound very natural. And uh, when you when you mention Enigma, uh, it's normally called the Enigma. Project. What does the project word mean? The, initially, there were a lot of other people involved, or there were other people involved. Now no, it's, no, no. It, it's you. No, isn't it, it? It, it, it say like this. Um, originally, yeah, originally uh, it was just uh, French lyrics. I wrote them together with a good friend in France, and um, it's based on samples and uh, and citations from 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 different. Uh, um, different kind of musics where I bought the rights over the years mm. to, to have the permission to use them. So and, uh, and basically uh, um, there are some guest vocalists yeah. or guitar players, but uh, if I need a guitar, but it's very seldom. So all the rest is done by myself. It, it, I, it, it always called it a project because it's not a band, so it's me. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but me not as a person as the performer in front of stage and behind the curtain. There's, the, 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 there's an image of you as Michel Cretu, the sort of the lonely reclusive figure in his studio. Is that who you are? Yes, yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it to, 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 to be like in a laboratory and to, to play around with my little ingredients and my little toys and try to combine them till I'm happy. And then when I'm happy, then I say, okay, let's see if the people are also happy or not. Lots of different phases in your musical uh, career there, Michel. Uh, let's go back to the very, very beginning, to the very early days. I'd like to ask you, what was your very first, what's, what's the earliest musical memory you have? It depends what kind of memory. So I remember when I was five and a half years old and uh, my parents told me I should uh, have some piano lessons. And it came a private teacher, a very old woman and... I wasn't in the mood at all to start to learn piano. And I remember the first two years or something, I always simulated to be ill or I don't know. I always had something to avoid to, to play piano till I changed with eight years in a music school. And since then really I was infected by the virus of music. And I, from this moment on, I knew all my life that I want to do something with music. Mm. It, w w did you actually come from a musical family? You certainly had a musical uncle. Yeah, yeah, an uncle. He was a violinist and a very famous one at this time. And he was the one who, who told my parents, your son is talented and so let him do music. And okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you, you trained as a classical pianist at some stage. You sort of, you, you developed a, a, a huge passion for pop music, for electronic pop music. Where did the electronic element come into it? I always say if the synthesizer wouldn't be invented, probably I would be a conductor nowadays. But um, since this beautiful instrument was invented, I was so fascinated and by the possibilities you have with it. Where, where did you play on your first synthesizer then? The first one, it was on, uh, on the Musical Conservatory in Frankfurt. They had a minimum and an ARP 2600, I remember. And, but used just for scientific purposes for the, for the students. And um, in the evening when everybody went home, um, I was just playing by myself without any instruction manual, just turning the buttons without knowing. They, at this time, I had no idea what's an oscillator or filter or for what it is. Yeah? Mm. And little by little, I started to, yeah, 
to play around. And then I realized, aha, it's how it is. And I was fascinated. And since then, I knew it has to be something with electronic instruments. And sometime around the, uh, uh, around the end of the 1980s, right at the end of the 80s, you had this idea for Enigma. Right. The, f the first Enigma record was described as, by some as, one of, as, a, as a hugely influential record. Did you have the feeling at the time that you were doing something radically different? Something very new. Yes, I knew it's an all or nothing. So, so it's, it's, it's a tremendous hit or a tremendous flop, one of both. So it was a kind of record where there's no way in between. And uh, okay, I'm very happy that it was a big success and not a big flop. You once said music is a certain ideology. That was an interesting word. I said this, I, yeah. I can't remember. In uh, an interview, I heard yeah. you. It's on tape somewhere. No, it's, it's out there on YouTube. I, I can't remember. <laughs> and I, didn't know, I don't know at the moment what I meant with it. OK, let me throw another quote at you. I don't want yeah. to trap you into talking about musical <laughs> ideologies, yeah? You once said you described yourself as a musical philosopher. No, as a you musical alchemist. I don't as know a musical where alchemist. So I used the word alchemist correctly at the beginning there? At the beginning, yeah? yes. What's all I, this about? This is, you know, this is taking wait, bits and pieces and putting them together. Exactly. And, and I just said, uh, uh, I have on my table the same ingredients like everybody. I just mix them in a different way. Mm. So, and um, that's the <laughs> idea of, and, and this endless search for the endless quest of inventing something. Yeah. And um, these were the alchemist goals. And this childish element that you talked about. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The, the child in me, I still keep it alive. And the child I, in you is, is alive and kicking. Yeah, 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 alive and kicking, yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's important. It's very what, important. What does a, what does a typical uh, Enigma fan look like? I don't know. You don't know? No. You don't do market research? You, you must meet your fans. No, I'm the one who acts behind the <laughs> curtains, so uh, I'm not meeting fans. I just get some response, I mean, through mails or, um, yeah. Um, and the research is, the, is done by, by the record company, so it's not me. But I think there are people between, uh, we had it, I don't know, something between 20 and 49. These are um, well-educated with a little bit more of uh, knowledge and, and... And a lot of... Uh, are you a religious person? There's a lot of sort of yes, yes, mysticism I'm, I'm, yeah, in your I'm, I'm, music. I believe in something, that it's something uh, on top of us all, but, but I'm not a believer in, in this kind of institution, these religious institutions, but I, I believe there's something. There's the, it, it has to be something, from nothing, nothing comes. I mean, even the Big Bang, okay, from where is coming this Big Bang? This, this yeah. question drives me nuts, but I will never have a, an answer for it. So it must be something. <laughs> Michel Cretu, when we're talking about languages, uh, you can speak five languages? Yes. What, are, what are the five languages? Uh, German, English, French, Spanish, Romanian. Not bad, not bad. Well, do, you, do you have five different personalities? No. I'm... You're the same person in each language? Yes, I think so, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Very often people have very different personalities for different languages. When, when we're talking about this whole question of integration, you should know this. Language is absolutely key to integration. It's a key because you have to communicate and to make people understand what your needs are and, and uh, to avoid misunderstandings. So um, it's, it's definitely the key of integration mm. and of friendship with people in other countries. Sure. Course. You, you came to Germany yourself as a, coming from Romania as a relatively young man. Did you have, the, did you have the, uh, the feeling that Germany welcomed you with open arms at the time? Absolutely. I never had the impression that somebody looks at me in a different way just because I'm coming from a very poor country. Uh, people were very warm to me and I was accepted by everybody. The opposite, I was like a little bit something exotic and they asked right. me, and how is it there and so on and so on. They were curious how, yeah, how I am, how it is from where I'm coming from. But you had the advantage at the time, of course, that you could speak German already. That's right. Your mother That's was Austrian, yeah? Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Okay. Um, do you have to, I mean, this is a very important question, how well a country is doing on this very modern issue of integrating immigrant communities. Do you have the German, the feeling when you, because you can see, you're a German who can see Germany from a distance. Right. You come back, do you have the feeling that Germany is getting it right or getting it wrong in general? No, I think it's doing it right because it's the most normal thing in the world that you expect from people who are coming from other countries, I don't know if it's Turkey or Pakistan or Romania or whatever, that after a certain amount of time they 
they, if they want to live in this country, that they accept uh, the tradition of the country and that they speak the language. I mean, uh, if people go to Britain also, uh, the big empire after a certain amount of time is expecting that the people adapt a little bit. You, you don't have to lose your traditions and your mm -hmm. culture, but still you have to adapt also something of the new territory where you live. You have to learn the language. Yeah, absolutely, mm. absolutely. Uh, and you're living in Spain now, although you're a German citizen with a German passport. Are you living in exile from Germany? Is there something about Germany that bugs you? No, not at all. I, I feel like a European. And you see, I, I lived 17 years in Romania, then 13 years in Germany. Uh, now I went to Spain, for, but, but, I'm, but I'm not all, all year long in Spain. So... Um, I'm traveling, um, it's also obligatory for my profession and everything. I travel a lot and um, I like it also. And I don't know where I will live maybe in 10 years. Nobody mm. said that I will die there. It's quite interesting that you're living in Spain. You uh, have a German passport. You grew up in Romania. You've sent your children, your teenage children, to school in England. Yes, <laughs> because I think that English is, uh, nowadays, I mean, in this open world, English is the world language without any discussion. And um, they grew up also with the British nanny and they were in the English kindergarten in, in Spain. So um, all their life they were, they were with English education and it's a logical thing now to send them to a boarding school. Okay. He's not telling the full story here, Michel Cretu. He sent them to an English boarding school because he wants them to be going to a strict school. He told me this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, I must confess that until I started sort of thinking about this programme and researching for this programme, I, I, the, the name Glass Hutter meant something to me, but I didn't know what it meant. Have you, have you been there? No, but uh, I have some watches from Lange und Söhne. The big... Uh, I have two ones, yeah. the number one and the cabaret. I see, yeah, good watches, yeah. How many watches have you got all together? I don't know exactly, but might, I mean the, 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 the collector's watches might be about 15 to 20, I don't know, I don't know exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And what, what, why have you become so interested in them? First of all, I, 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 can't give you an, um, I can't give you an answer, basically. I don't know, I like them, I, I love the, how they look like, and it's fascinating, and these little f microscopic mechanic things. And oh, yeah. I, I love also complicated watches, so with, with perpetual calendar, and if they have skeletons and we can see everything inside. It's fascinating. It's quite funny because you were telling me about the watch that you're wearing at the moment, which can only be scratched by a diamond, if I understood yeah, correctly. Yeah, because it's, it's a diamond powder here, the, 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 the case, it's... Um, spe it, it, it's the opposite of this watch, it's, so it's a quartz... Uh, so the mechanical uh, point of view, from, under mechanical point of view, it's nothing special. The only yeah. special is because it's very good for daily... Uh, for daily work, was, yeah, but I daily. can't destroy it, I can't scratch it and nothing. So exactly, it's... so when you're working in your studio, you're doing these great big long sessions that you do. I'm told you work sometimes like 20, 30 hours. Yeah, but then I sleep one day long or something. Yeah? Do you look at your watch while you're doing all this? No, or is it, It's a timeless sort of a thing. No, 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 the music just sucks me and I forget time and if it's day or night or something. So. Yeah, it's funny, it's funny you being interested in watches and time because one of the messages of your music, if I understand, one of the messages that people are getting from your music is forget the present and sort of get into this timeless, spheric, esoteric yeah, right. realm. Yeah, that may be the, the balance <laughs> to it, you know, then uh, the perfect time, I don't know. Is your music, uh, a thought suddenly occurs to me, is your music escapist? Yes, yeah, can be, yeah. Escaping from what? From, from Daily Rush. Is that something that you have inside you, a sort of a yearning to get away from the... That, is that why you live out there in Ibiza and, and, and uh, have a little bit of a, a hermit's existence? Mm, no. I love nature. I love how it looks like, this hilly landscape. And uh, the weather is good, so um, this is inspiring. But, but also from time to time I need the opposite, you know, the, the big city and this and this. Because life, life includes this and that. So both sides, and um, it's important to have contact to both of them. So this is sooner or later reflected in the music. Give me one quick answer to this question. Yes. What comes after Enigma for you? You mean musically as a project? Musically or? as a project. Um, Where's it going? I don't know. Maybe I would like to write a musical or something. Ah, so cool. something completely different. Okay. On that thought, we're going to move on, uh, Michelle, to the quiz at the end of the show. Quick questions, quick answers. Um, are you a technician or a musician? Musician. Yes, or Elton John? You told me that these were two of your favourite early influences. Um, both. <laughs> both, you had to say that. Are you introverted or extroverted? 
Depends of the situation. Religion or spiritualism? Spiritualism. Fact or fantasy? Both. Watch or clock? Watch. I'm told that you, uh, you're a little bit of a night owl, so I'm going to ask you the following question. Night or day? Definitely night. Definitely night. Digital or analog? Digital. Classical training or musical instincts? Both. <laughs> but musical instincts is more important. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to a good guest, uh, the spiritually and musically minded Michael Kretu. I hope he's a little bit less of an enigma to you now. Uh, if you've enjoyed his company as much as I have, then do come back next week. Just. <laughs>